for a long enough time. It's going to happen at some point in time. Expect it. So idea is save early, save often. This editor script will just make it that any time you click on play, it will uh, auto save everything for you. Uh, there's also Unity 5, I believe, was added under preferences here. Um, Probably staring me right in the face here. Hold on one second. Ver uh, so verify saving assets. This was another thing that you can kind of do too, which gives you a little bit more of a list. This can get annoying really fast though. Verify saving assets. So if I come in here and I just, um, I don't know, let's make one little change here and take something like uh, a coin and drag it into our scene. We play, it says, hey, this has changed in your project. Do you want to save these? It's good to kind of see what you're saving, but this kind of gets annoying very fast. So I'm going to say don't save it. Close that. And get rid of that. So there's also a version of that autosave script out there, which will, uh, or that save script, which will autosave for you every 30 seconds or minute or five minutes or however long you can specify. So just a little quick workflow. And last but not least, let's go to our Git workflow. Uh, there's really, really great content out there already on how to use Git, lots of it. Uh, there's kind of the joke that Git is not a disconnected tool because you need to be online to be able to read the documentation on how to use it. Uh, so uh, I think Git's a cool tool, uh, but it can get complicated. So I want to show you a very, very basic workflow. If you are already used to using Git, you might say, you know what, this isn't the correct workflow or, or this won't work for me because I work in a team environment. Fair enough. I want to show you the very basic version here. It's going to be about a two minute demo. Um, there are many other ways to do this. So I'm going to show you the way of, if you go and create a project right now on uh, like Visual Studio Online, or if you use GitHub and you have this, this Git URL you want to use, how we can use that. So first, when you have a GitHub project, so let's go over to um, something that is not yet there. So if I just right click, show and explore, the, um, that basic demo that I did before, right? Where we added some stuff in here. Well, let's, let's even go a little bit more complicated, that whole standard asset demo. This has got a lot of assets in, inside of it here. So a lot of things in this folder. The first thing you need to do is take a git ignore file. And that will tell git, hey, I don't want to include library. I don't want to include temp. I know there's a bunch of garbage here that I don't want to save in the source control. And so git ignore will ignore that for you. I have a specific one that I use um, actually for, where is my git ignore here? I will do under my source. Unity snippets dot git ignore. And if you go to any of my Unity projects on GitHub, you can just reuse the one I have on there that's visible online. I'm going to take this git ignore and paste it into my project. Boom, it's there. I've got the uh, git tools for Windows installed. So I'm going to open that up, go to a command line here. That loads up. I'm just going to switch over to this folder. So I'm going to copy this path out, say cd that location, git init. I have now initialized it. It's created a .git folder inside of here. Git add. Most folks do git add dot. In other words, git everything. I get in the habit of doing dash a because if you remove, if you add and then remove files, you need dash a to be able to find those files. So as a general habit, I do git uh, add dash a dot. That is telling source control about every single file that you have in here. Once we're done with that, in fact, what we can do is while that's processing, let's go over to like GitHub here and say, you know what, I want to create a new repository. My Unity project, we'll create that as public. They give you the commands. We've already run git init. I'm not going to add my readme right now. I have a whole bunch of other things that I need to add there. So we're going to proceed with this one right here, git commit. Let's see if it's finished yet. So it's still adding all my assets into there. As soon as that finishes, we're going to commit. In other words, take a snapshot of everything I have there and name it something. After that, we're going to do this one-time operation to point my local system to my GitHub site. And then when I'm all ready to go, I can push my local changes up there. And then I just essentially Repeat, let's go back to my slider because that makes it a little bit easier. So we knit, we add, commit, push, and then we just repeat these three ones over and over and over again. It's very, very easy. Let's see if it's finished and I will just, uh... yeah, 
Let's go back to this one here, which was the much smaller one, just because, again, we are kind of getting short on time here. I'll show you how easy it is to set up, though. We go to that other fairly empty project here. We right click, show and explore, paste in my git ignore, copy that path out, open up GitHub, the git tool, I should say, not GitHub. CD, git init, git add, dash A. You don't need the dash A the first time, but again, I like to do it as a standard practice. Voila, we only had a few files on there. Git commit dash M, my changes. There we see everything we've just done. And let's actually point the, the one I just created on GitHub to that guy there. I'm not going to be able to finish this just because of authentication here. Copy that out. There we go. This is taking my local snapshot I just created, my, my local commit I just created, and pushing it up there. Oh, actually, I am already authenticated on my Git tools here. That's why I worked. If I go over to GitHub now, Look, everything's there already. If I go back to my Unity project and I change something, let me just change this location, save that as my main.unity scene and close this out. Let's go back to the command line here. If I say git status, it says, hey, we see there's a couple things that have changed here. Let's add that. Commit it. I added a scene and move stuff. Push it up to GitHub. And then, as soon as this is done, I'm rubbing my hands like an evil. Uh, <laughs> when it's done. When it's done, give that one second to finish, and there we go. Refresh our changes here. That's it. Simple as that. Now, for some of you um, designers out there or other people who maybe are not so comfortable with uh, command line uh, and GitHub, there are several uh, GUI tools available for um, GitHub uh, synchronization and things like that. So I know command line sometimes can be a little foreign to some people. Yep. And if that is, um, there are tools like uh, GitHub Windows. Um, and I think Subversion and other there's other different uh, products out there. That so there's uh, Source Tree. I know uh, I know some folks that really like Source Tree. The uh, the Git tools for Windows, the ones through GitHub are are really easy to use. It's a nice GUI, and yep. you just you don't have to use a command line at all. So, but I just want to show you that if you're using command line, the basics of it, so you understand the command structure. Absolutely. Uh, the GUI tools essentially do the same thing on the back end. So very basic to use. All right. Well, that takes us to the end of this module, and uh, we will all. See you very shortly for Module 2, where we're going to talk about new Unity 5 features. Yep. See you shortly. See ya. Uh, my name is Mark Shonigal. I'm an evangelist for Unity Technologies. Been in the industry about 20 years. Time. Film, games, visual effects, rendering, all sorts of good stuff. You've been, yeah. you've been an evangelist for a long time for various products and uh, pretty yes, stuff in the marketplace. Yes, a long time at Soft Image. Spent some time at Microsoft a long time ago. That's right. It was great. Now had, uh, had lunch with Bill Gates. I did. <laughs> cool story there. <laughs> Not for today. <laughs> you have to hit him up privately for that. Yes. All right, today, uh, for this module, this is since we're going to be talking about what's new, uh, some, some things in Unity 5. Not necessarily a whole, uh, not an all-encompassing what's new in Unity 5, but we're going to take some Unity 5 specific features, uh, look at them. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, standard shader, lighting, and skyboxes. Animations. Now, the animation system in Unity has uh, existed for a while, but there's been a little bit of change there. But we're going to kind of do an animation overview and then talk about the new audio and audio mixer system as well. So I think we've got some cool stuff in this module. Yeah, for so sure. So whether you are a beginner, intermediate, or whoever, uh, hopefully this is some pretty cool new content that we're going to show you. I think so. All right. Let's talk about the standard shader because the standard shader is new to Unity 5, and I think it's ex extremely important to understand about 75% uh, of what we're going to cover here is somehow involving a standard shader. Um, why another shader? I guess first, what is a shader? A shader takes 
typically some either color or uh, image. And basically it's code that says, hey, here's how we're gonna draw this. Uh, maybe we wanna make, maybe tunify it, maybe look like a cartoon, or maybe we wanna make it reflective or not reflective. And Unity has a whole bunch of built-in shaders. You can see kind of on this image here, um, there's mobile shaders that were optimized for mobile. You've got um, like Tune, UI, I mean there's so many different shaders. Why another shader? Because the idea is now to simplify this. Uh, with a standard shader, there's two of them. There's the default one, which can kind of give you metallic, and specular is the other one, and you can see them both listed here, standard and standard with the specular setup. You can make the specular setup look just like the other one as well. It's just uh, more of a matter of what you use for your workflow. If you are brand new to Unity, it really doesn't matter one way or the other. This is really uh, for preference. Some will choose one over the other. I was gonna say, the specular setup actually allows you to make objects that are not uh, available in the real world. You can go beyond the extremes that uh, the real world allows, which your chart will show in a minute. I'm trying to think of some, some superhero names, elements. Yeah, like Kryptonite. Kryptonite. There you go, <laughs> Kryptonite. <laughs> uh, if you are a shader writer, you can get the source code to the standard shader off Unity's website. In fact, the, um, you guys just released some of the assets for the blacksmith yes. demo. And the blacksmith demo actually has a customized uh, standard shader. So uh, go check that out on Unity's website. They, uh, it's a really complex and neat, beautiful looking demo called the blacksmith. Uh, it's it's a, about a two minute long, three minute long video that you should all watch anyway. That and, was uh, our GDC teaser. Check out Viking Village too. That's another uh, really cool example using the standard shader. Cool. All right, so all new materials that you're gonna create inside of Unity, use it by default. So anything that you're going to render in Unity, any object that's gonna display something has a material associated with it. And a material has a shader. So if you wanna display something, it needs a material, and a material has a shader to tell it how to display it. Caution when importing models. So uh, Matt was talking earlier about the workflow going from Maya and bringing things into Unity. Um, when you bring in things from other programs at times, you might not be using a standard shader. Now that we're moving forward on the standard shader, I like to standardize on a standard <laughs> shader. Um, and so I try to make sure that any models that I bring in, uh, when I look at the materials assigned to them, that they're using a standard shader. The idea behind a standard shader is to give you this kind of a consistent look be between things. It's not necessarily to say one is maybe more realistic than the other. It's so you can use this one shader that is also good for mobile and desktop environments. It's optimized for both. If you don't use parts of the shader, as we'll look at the interface in a moment, if you don't use parts, it will optimize them out. So it's one shader uh, and it's kind of the same code. So it will give you this, this uh, consistent look across the different ways you're using the shader. Now here uh, on Unity's website, you can find the shader calibration scene charts. And this gives you a good idea of what each of the standard shaders will give you. So on the left is the regular standard shader. That was the one that just said standard. In other words, that's the metallic standard shader. And it's called metallic because there's a metallic setting. And we'll actually look at this in a second here. Uh, the one on the right was the specular setup. So if we look on the left here, and we can see if we change in Unity's interface, there's actually metallic value and a smoothness value. So just imagine for a moment, these are sliders in Unity's interface, as we'll see. Uh, if we change the metallic value from zero all the way up to one, you can see how this object goes from not being metallic looking to really being this full reflective material uh, out of one. And it, there's a note here that almost all metals in the real world, if you're trying to simulate them here, will have a look of, of near one. Metals will give you that look. Uh, almost all non-metals will be zero. And if you go over to the specular side, you can kind of see as you, as you come down here on smoothness, you'll notice that there's a consistent look. You can actually get a pretty similar look at times between the two of these. Uh, smoothness value, again, here, think of, a, uh, think of a metal ball that's been kind of sandpapered a little bit, so it's kind of a little rough. And you can see it would give you something like this. And as, um, as that kind of texture becomes smoothed out, you get more of that mirror finish. So you can control that as well. Yeah, I was gonna say, think of, uh, think of smoothness on more like the microscopic level. Yeah. Like if you really polish a chrome bumper, you know, you get that really intense hot spot. As it gets dirty, the rays start to bounce more inconsistently, right? There you are. Get that kind of diffused look on your specular. Speaking of chrome, there are rumors that, that there's a particular type of car that you like and spend a lot of time with. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw in, in the uh, Mark's intro slide, uh, you have uh, a 21 window a 21 window VW bus that I painstakingly restored to a very, very shiny specular. You should try to reproduce that in <laughs> Unity. I will. <laughs> I am. All right. 
<laughs> All right, let's look at the standard shader. Um, I'm going to use the shader calibration scene to show you this. Now, this is something you can get from the Unity Asset Store. It's a package. Uh, you can load it through the website or window, um, window, Asset Store, and load the shader calibration scene. The idea of the shader calibration scene is uh, a lot of the concepts we're going to talk about today 